Okay, I think we're good to go. Audio, lights. Oh, hi everyone, I'm Jose. And on this episode, we're gonna be looking at augmented reality. Also called mixed reality, extended reality, AR, MR, ER, essentially they're all more or less the same. And for this video and to help my sanity and probably yours as well, we're gonna to refer to it all as AR. So what is augmented reality? If you use technology or you watch sports, then you might already have an idea or experienced it in one form or another. The basic idea around this tech is to add superimposed graphics or audio over real world environments in real time. Combining both of these, overlaying one on the other to enhance what we see, bringing more information to the user or as fun interactive elements. Now, AR has been around for quite a while and longer than most people realize. The tech that we interact with today that allows us to play Pokemon Go on our phones or use photograph filters, believe it or not, has essentially been around since the 1960s. The early beginnings of the tech was way back in 1968 when people were still watching TV in black and white and only on one channel. Developed by Harvard professor Ivan Sutherland along with some colleagues, they developed a mechanical tracking system that was attached to a head-mounted display. Ivan was already regarded by some as a technical wizard in the field of early computer graphics, having developed and invented Sketchpad, the ancestor of modern CAD programs, and also a major pioneer in the development of computer graphics in general. Although Ivan and his team created the rudimentary system, it wouldn't be until the 1990s before the term augmented reality was coined and used. First, by Boeing researchers, when they developed the first industrial uses of AR, and then, of course, being picked up by the military and the US Air Force when they saw its potential and developed a platform called Virtual Fixtures. From this early start and through the late 90s and early 2000s, the use of AR was more widely adopted across industries. The first examples of AR you might be familiar with and maybe haven't even realized is with sport. You might have seen it being used to mark areas on a pitch, distances or when ball crosses the line. Over the last few years, there's been a big drive to invent a piece of technology that consumers would mass adopt and help drive the next generation of mobile tech or wearable tech. Companies like Google with their Google Glass technology was one of the first companies to jump in with quite a bit of hype, but unfortunately consumers didn't really take to it and it quietly disappeared. Since then, a host of other companies like Magic Leap or Microsoft HoloLens continue to develop more advanced pieces of tech. Enticed by the next technology gold rush that's being forecast to happen, codenamed T288 and possibly the most anticipated breakthrough will be Apple's 8K combined VR and AR glasses that won't be tethered to a computer or a phone. From retail to automotive and emergency services, the number of companies trialing the technology or incorporating it into everyday use is growing. Just over the last few years, AR has started to impact how shoppers expect to interact with retail products. According to Gartner, by 2020, this year, 100 million consumers will shop in AR online and in-store. Companies are starting to embed smart interactive content into their products and immerse consumers in a world where real and virtual merge. We're seeing packaging that allows consumers to scan an image and launch a mini game or being able to scan and research products straight off the shelf maybe helping you find a better deal or tempting you to buy a ticket or upsell you on a product. For me, some of the most exciting uses of AR is for the emergency services and in education. Firefighters are using it to help search for people in smoke-filled rooms, while surgeons are using it to perform operations safer and faster. In education, AR will continue to become increasingly common. Pupils will be able to learn in fun ways, bringing new flexibility to teaching. So students will be able to take a trip through time or space, go to ancient Rome or see dinosaurs, interact with virtual atoms and the building blocks of the universe. Pretty damn exciting. 
And with the introduction and rollout of 5G over the next few years, with the potential data speeds of up to three gigabits a second, it should mean that AR units won't have to be tethered to larger PCs. So if you follow Moore's law, it should mean that devices become cheaper, smaller, faster. What do you think? Is this all hype? Are you already using AR in school or at work? Put your comments below and let us know. Um, if you like the video or would like to see more, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.